Seven years ago, my family and I moved to Arizona and we absolutely love living here. In this video, I'm gonna share with you some pros and cons of living in Arizona and you're gonna be surprised by some of those. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm Alejandra Palladino, your local Arizona real estate agent. If this is your first time on this channel and you want to know more about living in Arizona, moving here, well make sure you subscribe and click the bell. That way you get alerted every time there's a new video that's out. My team and I are getting so many calls from you guys and we love it. So if you're thinking about making a move, reach out. We would be happy to help you. Moving to Arizona has been the absolute best decision for my family and I. The crazy thing is, I had only been here once. Yup, I had no idea if I was going to love it, no idea what it was going to be like to live in the desert, but luckily I have fallen in love. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to put this together for you to give you a little bit more in depth of what it's like to live here and that way you can figure out hmm is it the best place for you or not so there's lots of pros in my opinion the pros weigh out the cons so I'm gonna start with those first pro number one living in Arizona can actually be really good for your health since it's always warm and sunny pretty much almost every day of the year I actually helped this really nice lady move here from Washington and she just told me that her body feels better here. I think it's just being in the warmer temperature compared to Washington. One of my best friends used to live in Seattle and she would tell me she could feel how the weather impacted her. It was such dreary weather, raining all the time, overcast. I know I would not be able to survive. I'm, I'm a generally a happy person, so I like it to be blue skies and great weather pretty much every day of the year. I would not be able to handle that overcast and dreary weather. I meet many people who move here from colder states and they tell me they can no longer take the harsh winters. They'd rather take warmer summers that we have than their harsh, harsh winters. And I know I completely can relate. My family, my parents used to live in Georgia. And let me tell you, when we'd go visit for the holidays, oh my gosh it would be so cold and windy i could like the wind almost just made my skin look old and terrible i i hated it there wasn't any moisturizer that would help i just i don't do well in these colder climates <laughs> pro number two there are so many fun activities to do here when we've got the nicer weather you basically just want to live outside and that time of year falls generally from october to june we have some of the best weather around you will see kids playing outside all, all day and night families too they're riding bikes they're walking dogs gosh i love seeing families just ride around on their bikes there's just so many great things i feel like when i lived in california i didn't see that as much being active is a way of life in arizona golf is very popular even people that don't live here come to Arizona year-round to play golf because we have so much of the best golf courses around there's a huge tournament that's here every year called waste management people from all over come to that another really popular sport that be people have been playing a lot is pickleball I'm really lucky because the neighborhood we moved to has a pickleball court and it is so much fun to play highly recommend it there are so many mountains nearby, so if you feel like hiking, going for a walk, riding a mountain bike, you can. It, within 30 minutes, depending on where you live, there's usually mountains nearby. I live in Queen Creek and the Santan Regional Mountains are about 30 minutes away from me and they're amazing. It's beautiful. I see people out there even with their dogs, on their bikes. It is incredible. Another popular activity in the desert is off-roading. You see people riding dirt bikes, quads, all-terrain vehicles. My family and I are dreaming of one day owning a four-seater all-terrain vehicle so all of us could go riding around in the, in the desert. It'd be so much fun. During the hotter months, we stay cool at the nearby lakes. There are two lakes within 30 minutes of where I live. I live in Queen Creek. There's two nearby, a Saguaro Lake and Canyon Lake. They're pretty amazing. And there's eight lakes within a three hour drive of Phoenix. So you wouldn't think that there's all these lakes in the 
in the desert, but there are, there's tons of them. And our favorite activity has become boating. During the hotter months, we will go uh, several times a month. It's so fun. If you wanna just ride on the boat or some people will wakeboard. We recently got a pool toy, which is super fun. You, it kinda looks like a blow up couch. You sit on the back and get pulled around. It's, it's a lot of fun. And it's just great being out on the water. And it, gives you another family bonding activity because my son loves going. Plus, I've seen people there kayaking, paddle boarding, fishing. There's so much you can do there. And some of the lakes have little areas that look like a beach. So when I'm there, I pretend I'm at the beach. <laughs> it basically got like sandy area uh, at the shoreline and you can see the water down. So when you're walking along, it's just, it's beautiful. I pretend I'm at the beach. Also, Arizona's got tons of local parks, from large community parks to local neighborhood parks. Like almost every neighborhood here has a park within it, which is amazing if you're a parent. Now, the community parks are incredible. They have so many fun things. They've got playgrounds, swings. Some of them even have catch and release ponds. I've seen some that look like Ninja Warrior obstacle courses. They have all kinds of activities these days. People ride motorcycles here like practically year round. Can you imagine riding a motorcycle along that beautiful desert scenery? I, I bet it'd be a lot of fun. My husband is one of those people that loves riding his motorcycle. He's got a group of friends and they go out. Um, they generally go through the night, do it during the nine cooler months of the year. But hey, I know if he could go year round, he probably would. Pro number three is the people. Gosh, people are so friendly here. I must admit, I was nervous when I first moved here. I was a brand new mom in a new state. We didn't know anybody. I only knew my husband who I came with and then my baby. So I was scared, but everywhere we went, we just started meeting people. If you're nice to people, hey, they're nice back or, or they're nice to you first and you're nice back and you just start meeting people everywhere. It's really great. Each house we've lived at, we've had the opportunity to meet some of the nicest people. Our neighbors have been incredible. Some of the most genuine people you'll ever meet, eager to help you all the time. So it's nice. Everyone here just seems very community focused. A lot of the, the cities and then the neighborhoods, they all plan different events to bring people together. It's, it's really quite nice. We live in Queen Creek, which is a suburb of Phoenix, about 30, 45 minutes, depending on where you go. And let me tell you, Queen Creek's got some of the funnest events possible. We've got Schnepp Farms. They've got their great pumpkin patch. In December, we have this incredible Christmas wonderland there. There's food truck Fridays here. There's just so many fun things. I love it. And it's a great way to meet other people where you live. But Queen Creek isn't the only place cities all throughout Arizona are like this. They have all these fun events to really bring the people together. It's so great and it's a great way to meet people. Pro number four is that you can get to different climates easily. So what I mean is if you want some cooler weather, let's say during the summer, you're like, oh, I can't take the heat anymore. You can drive about two hours north to Payson and Pine and other areas up there. And guess what? It's usually about 20, sometimes 30 degrees cooler. So a lot of people that live here, that's what they do. And they get to the point, they're like, I need to escape the heat. They'll go up, uh, you know, up north for like the weekend or something, and cool down and just experience different climates. My family and I actually are gonna spend Christmas in Flagstaff this year. My son, who's seven, told me he's never seen snow and he's dying to see snow. So fingers crossed it snows when we're there because obviously no guarantees, but this year we've gotten a ton of rain. So I'm really hoping it, the rain continues and we get snow up there. My husband and I love going to Sedona. It is absolutely breathtaking. It's only about two hours, two and a half hours from where you're at uh, in Phoenix and it is so beautiful we love going just to have like a weekend getaway the two of us we could do some hiking some shopping uh, amazing eating let me tell you this year we went for our anniversary and there's this restaurant that you basically eat next to a creek so there's all these tables lined up next to a creek and it's amazing. It's a surreal experience. You're sitting there eating and you feel like someone's playing a loud recording of water just going by. So it is absolutely magical. So if you go to Sedona, I highly recommend that. 
one of my favorite places to go when I feel like I need to recharge a little bit and something that's great for the whole family is Rocky Point. Also known as Puerto Penasco, it is a beach in Mexico. It's only four hours drive from Arizona. It is amazing. And funny enough, when we're there, we always meet all these people that live in Arizona because that beach has become kind of like the Arizona beach. All the Arizonans drive down there and enjoy it because it's so close and it's affordable. We usually get an Airbnb type place so that that way we can cook if we want to and then we eat out if we want to we have options but this one place we stay at's got it's almost like a water park they've got pools they've got all these water slides and my son loves going it's, it's just great to go and recharge so now that we've discovered it we try to go a few times a year because i'm a beach girl so i love going there also, Arizona is so close to California, so if you feel like going there to visit, it's only a five to seven hour drive, depending on where you go to in California. So again, another place you can easily get to from Arizona if you want to experience different climate. Pro number five, there is a variety of areas you can live in. Each of us give you a different type of feel all within 45 minutes. So let's say you want a more metropolitan, higher end feel, you would live somewhere like Scottsdale. Scottsdale is gorgeous. It is beautiful. The shopping there is incredible. They have some of the best restaurants, hands down. My mother-in-law actually lives around there, so we go often and we go and enjoy restaurants with her. Now, my family and I, we live in Queen Creek, which is 45 minutes from Scottsdale, and that gives us more of that small town feel. We pretty much know all the neighbors in our neighborhood. Everyone's so friendly. It's, it's just nice. Now, both places that I mentioned, Scottsdale and Queen Creek, are great for raising families, but they're gonna give you a different kind of living experience. Scottsdale's more high-end, really nice luxurious homes great shopping all you know it's just different and then queen creek's got that more small town feel i mean when i'm driving around i still see some farms and farmland i love that there's a charm to it and there's something about when you're driving around you can see the mountains the santan mountains it's just beautiful so again both of them really great excellent schools both of them have great restaurants but scottsdale does have more restaurants but at the end of the day, you have to figure out what type of living environment is better for you and your family. Or if you want more of a city life, Phoenix is popular. Central Phoenix is actually pretty incredible. They've got these gorgeous streets lined with these mature, older, big, beautiful trees. And then there's these gorgeous historic homes that it reminds me so much of different areas of California. I love just going there and looking at the old historic homes. But there's a lot of fun stuff to do there. Live theater, I go downtown there a lot actually to watch uh, live theater events. Um, restaurants, so many fun things to do and it gives you more of that city atmosphere. Pro number six, we generally have a lower cost of living compared to other states. For instance, our state income tax is only 3%. Now, I know my husband told me that when we moved here, he felt like he got a raise because the state wasn't taking as much of his money. <laughs> so hey, if you're coming from a state that has higher income tax, you would probably see the benefit as well. Our property taxes are generally lower as well. They're 0.6% here, whereas the national average is 1%. Now, if we compare it to somewhere like Texas, known for having very high property taxes, they're at 1.69%. And I think California is around 0.73%. So as you can see, you'll save money on your property taxes here. I will say the cost of living has increased over the past few years. I started noticing it when COVID happened. And then also we had this huge influx of moving here. So a lot of the locals complain that all these people moved here from more expensive states and that raised up the cost of living in Arizona. I don't really know if that's true <laughs> or if it was COVID and supply chain, who knows? Definitely the cost of goods has gone up, but then again, it's kind of national. So we're not the only state like that, but either way, I gotta tell you, my family and I, having come from California, we still think it's a lot more affordable to live here than it is to live in California. The house that we own in Queen Creek, 
would be probably double or maybe even triple what we bought it for. It's just a huge comparison. We probably could never even have bought a house there to be quite honest, it's just so expensive. So we enjoy living here and we've been able to save a lot of money and live a much better life. All right, now as you can see, there's so many pros to live here. Now honestly, there's tons more. I could go on and on and on, but those are just some that I picked out as being important and I thought I would share with you more information about living here. Now I'm going to share with you some cons. Again, my opinion on what I've experienced and also in speaking with others. Con number one. It is too hot for too long. I honestly hear that many times from people, especially if you're new here. They always say you gotta get through your first summer and then you kind of get used to it. But honestly, if you think about it, it's July, August, September. Those are your three hottest months. Um, June does is warmer and some of October as well. But honestly, it's really those three months that are the hottest. Now think about it. Would you trade having three hot months for nine, amazing months out of the year. I mean, we'll be enjoying our outdoors when people are bundled up, hoping that they're not gonna freeze to death in other states. So it, again, it's the trade-off and then what will work for you. I would not make it in those freezing cold states. I'm a warm weather girl. So for me, Arizona has been perfect. Once it's October, you start feeling the weather cool down and you just start doing all these fun outdoor activities. Now, let me tell you, it's not that we don't go outside during July, August, and September. We just have different activities. You make sure to either do activities that are indoors, so you're nice in air conditioning, or honestly, a lot of us have pools. Now, if you don't have your own private pool, then people either become friends with someone that has one, or honestly, a lot of the neighborhoods have community pools. So it's a great way to enjoy a pool and then not maintain it. But trust me, a lot of the houses here have them. So one of your friends will probably have a pool or you just make friends with someone with a pool. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's a lot of local water activities. Now, what I mean by that is that some neighborhoods actually have their own splash pads, which is basically an area and water shoots up and the kids play in it. So some neighborhoods within them have their own. The big community parks I mentioned earlier, they usually have splash pads as well. So there's different areas to, and ways to cool down. Now, there's also these community I call them water parks. And basically it's like a public pool. You can go in, they've got a pool, they've got a splash pad and other fun water activities for the kids. So it's fun. And, and there are many of those all spread out in different cities. Also, there's all those lakes that I mentioned earlier. Now, another fun activity you can do is go tubing down the Salt River. Oh my goodness, right now, you generally have to be eight years old or older. To do that, if you go through, it's called salt river tubing. If not, my husband figured out a way that we could do it on our own. You basically buy your own tubes. You can find them on Amazon or local stores. You need two cards and one person is gonna drive and park their car to where the end of the tubing area is. You park there and then everyone rides over in the other car to where everyone gets in the river. And that way you all go down in the tube and then uh, you just go down to the first parked car and go pick everyone up basically. So it's a little sneaky way we figured out because we wanted to take our son who's not eight years old yet. And let me tell you, he loved it. What we did was we bought a double tube on Amazon. So that way one of us was with him and it's so much fun. You can pack drinks. You're just literally floating down the, the river. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great activity for everyone. Con number two, depending on where you live, it can be rather dusty. Now this isn't the case for everywhere in Arizona, but definitely for Queen Creek where I live. And I think part of the reason is because of all the open fields, the farmlands that I mentioned. So if you get any wind blowing through, it's gonna pick up any dust and just blow it around. Or for instance, the neighborhood I live in is a new build community and some people have not landscaped their backyards. And um, let me tell you, wind picks up, their, their dirt back, backyard gets into my backyard, gets into my pool. And plus when we have dust storms, it is really incredible because a big windstorm picks up 
all this dust. They call them haboobs here. Now, as beautiful as they are to watch, they are messy. And this year we've had a ton of them because we've had a lot of monsoons which are amazing to watch but that dust storm is not the fun part and once it blows through there's literally a layer of dust on everything now this doesn't necessarily happen year round but it's been happening a lot this year if you live somewhere up north like Payson or Sholo, you're not gonna necessarily have all this dustiness because guess what? There's more grass, there's pine trees, so you don't have to deal with all that. So again, it is a calm, but it's not for all areas. Now, my mother-in-law is in Scottsdale. She does complain of some dust, uh, let's say on her patio furniture, but um, I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as what we experience. Con number three, we don't have seasons here. We generally go from scorching hot summers, about three months of those, to uh, cooler temperatures. It's never like a gradual shift or anything. It's really interesting. It's, it's hard to explain until you experience it. Um, so if you've got big, warm, snuggly clothes, you're probably not gonna be wearing it unless you're like me and when it drops below 70 i actually get really cold i think i've gotten used to living in this warmer climate so below 70 you will see me in a big poofy jacket and i'm warmed up with some coffee or hot cocoa <laughs> i can't handle the cold and below 70 is cold for me i know it's silly i hope you've enjoyed these pros and cons that I shared and helped you imagine a little bit more what it would be like living here. Now, if you're curious about making a move, have any questions, reach out. I'm happy to help guide you any way that I can. Even if it's just to answer some questions or send your relocation guide, reach out. My team and I would love to speak with you and help you out. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.